What's up guys, Prathima here. So instead of bringing you the review of the Nothing Phone 1 right away, I took some time, more than a month actually, and I think I am finally ready to give you my verdict on it. Just after the launch of this phone, you might have heard several reports about its software as well as hardware issues. But with a few OTA updates that Nothing has pushed, I can tell you that most of them have been fixed now. However, one thing nothing messed up initially was the shipping delays. I was one of those crazy fans to unlock the pass to get the pre-order invite code and then purchased it on the first pre-order sale day, but I had to wait for almost three weeks to receive my package. And it seems like I wasn't alone. A lot of users on Twitter have complained about this very issue. Thankfully, nothing has sorted this trouble and it is now available in stock on Flipkart. But sadly, in doing so, they have also hiked the price. Nothing says that the reason for the price increment is because of the fluctuating exchange rates and rising component costs. Fair enough, but if you look at the current status of the smartphone industry, sales are declining. And uh, most brands are in fact offering price drops, including Nothing Phone One's competition like the Galaxy A73 and the iQ9. Still, after using this phone for a little over a month now, I think it is actually a very good mid-range device for the price, but there's a catch which I will talk about later in this video, so do watch this video till the end. Okay, let's first talk about the design which in my experience has been something of a conversation starter. Ever since I started using the Nothing Phone 1, I've been stopped by a bunch of people asking me just what kind of phone this is. And when I'd reply saying it's nothing, the pure confusion on their face is still kind of funny to me. It's a terrible pun, I know, but I can't help it. And that confusion would quickly change to amusement when I'd start flexing the LED lights at the back. The Glyph interface, as Nothing calls it, definitely adds a unique character to the phone. Like everyone else, I was pretty excited to see it in action for the first few days, but that excitement, honestly, did not last very long. From getting LED notification alerts to setting custom light patterns, there's a lot it can do. But even for someone who has a habit of placing the phone face down, the glyph lights did not make much of a difference in how I interact with the notifications on my phone. The ability to set custom patterns or sound to certain contact or apps sure sounds interesting at first, but I found having to memorize those customizations a bit tedious. Now behind all these uh, flashy lights and see-through design, this however is a well-made smartphone. The Nothing Phone 1 feels very solid to hold, but I also found it to be a little wide for my small hands. Almost as wide as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's also clear that this phone is heavily inspired by the latest iPhones thanks to its flat aluminium frames with rounded edges and flush buttons. But I must say that its aluminium frames do not feel as premium as the one on the regular iPhone 13 and that could be simply because nothing has used 100% recycled aluminium on this phone. At 193 grams, it isn't also lightweight by any means but you can get an evenly distributed heft making it very comfortable to hold on the hands. As for the color options, the black and white choices almost feel like a personality test to me somehow. Westward fans will know what I'm talking about. Which would you prefer? And even though I like how the glyph lights are more distinct in this black variant, unfortunately you get a lot of fingerprint smudges here. On to the display side of things, the Nothing Phone 1 has a 6.5 inches 10-bit OLED panel with a smooth 120Hz refresh rate. It's pretty standard stuff. But what I am especially fond of here though are the uniform bezels on all sides. The actual quality of this screen is also quite good. It has nice viewing angles and colors look punchy and pleasing in the default profile as well. One thing I noticed right away when I started using this phone is that its default color temperature calibration was slightly off. It looks a bit warm, so you have to play with the temperature slider in the settings to solve the issue. The Nothing Phone 1 also gets bright enough under direct sunlight, but it's not the brightest screen I've seen on a mid-range phone. 
nothing says that this panel can actually hit 1200 nits of peak brightness but it's currently maxed out at just 700 nits and um, i think the reason why they did not allow the brightness to go higher is because even at 700 nits the phone one gets quite hot under direct sun so you can only imagine how hot it would get when blasting at 1200 nits of brightness outdoors the Phone One's official product page lists that this restriction was a part of the Nothing OS 1.1.2 update, even though it was not mentioned in the change log. So I wish Nothing was a bit more transparent with its update policies as well. Anyway, the binge watching experience here is quite nice thanks to the overall good quality display panel. It is also Asia 10 Plus certified, but for now, there's no Asia playback on streaming platforms like Netflix. As far as the sound quality is concerned, I am not too impressed with its stereo speakers. Sure, it gets uh, loud enough, but the imbalance between the top and bottom speaker unit feels a bit unpleasant to me. Other than that, its optical fingerprint feeder works perfectly fine. I am also quite fond of its sharp haptic feedback, which makes for a delightful typing experience. Okay, now let's get to the performance side of things. For its first ever smartphone, nothing could not go for the more powerful, more expensive chips uh, since it has invested so much in the design aspect and it had to cut down the costs somewhere. It's not that the Snapdragon 778G Plus here is an unreliable performer or anything, but I just expected a bit more from nothing in this regard. I feel like if nothing had used the faster Snapdragon 870 or even MediaTek's Dimensity 8100 here, the UI and UX experience would have been much nicer. Regardless, I am happy with how Nothing OS handles memory management and the app opening time is decent too. Plus, under regular usage, the phone does not heat up or even get warm. Still, you will definitely not feel like you're using a flagship or a semi-flagship phone here. And the Nothing Phone 1 begins to show its limits if you start playing games that are heavy on the GPU. For instance, playing Genshin Impact at high settings with 60 FPS mode turned on, I only got around 35 to 40 FPS on average with frequent frame drops and stutters. And after 20 minutes into the game, the front of the phone got as hot as 45 degrees Celsius. Other relatively less demanding titles don't generate as much heat while still delivering stable gameplay, but the temperature readings I'm seeing here are noticeably higher than other Snapdragon 778G phones. So if gaming is a priority, then I can't really recommend this phone to you. Instead, you can uh, get far more powerful phones like the Poco F4, the Redmi K50i, the iQ9 SE, and the list goes on. And almost most of them are available at a much cheaper price tag as well. So it's pretty clear that nothing is trying to position itself as a premium brand and not as a performance entry phone in the smartphone world. And it's noticeable when you look at its clean, almost flagship-like software experience. If you ask me, I think the Nothing OS has the potential to become the best OS for Android. It's not quite there, but things look good so far. The near stock and bloatware free Nothing OS has been a delight to use. I also found most of Nothing's cosmetic tweaks to Android 12 to be very refreshing instead of unnecessary. It has not overdesigned anything in particular, but Nothing's spin on stock Android 12 feels quite interesting to me and definitely unique. The cherry on top is that Nothing has also promised three generations of OS and four years of security updates for the phone one. However, the company has now confirmed that the Android 13 update is not arriving until the first quarter of 2023. I honestly don't mind that at all and I am happy as long as nothing works on fixing all the minor bugs with this phone, especially the Nothing launcher which has gone better with the updates but still there are some bugs which should be fixed with a few more updates. So when I first started using the Nothing Phone 1, camera was that one area where I was worried that this phone would disappoint, but I must say that Nothing has really surprised me with its ability. After the latest update, its 50 megapixel main camera takes great photos in ample lighting conditions. Images have plenty of details, they have nice colors, highlight control, and dynamic range. The photos are somewhat contrast heavy, which I prefer, but this can result in crushed shadows when there's no sufficient lighting. 
I hope this does get improved in the future. Other than that, considering the price, I like what Nothing's camera department have done so far. I also like the photos coming out of its ultra-wide angle camera. Unlike your typical mid-range smartphone, both the wide and ultra-wide angle cameras on the Nothing Phone 1 deliver fairly consistent images. However, that consistency starts to break down a little once the sun goes down. I'm also really digging its portrait shots. The way it maintains skin tone, background exposure and edge detection is really impressive. Low-light photos from the Phone 1 are quite nice as well. Nothing's image processing does a good job at preserving details, whereas the photos are not grainy or anything like that either. Compared to the daytime shots, the images do turn out slightly oversaturated with a noticeably cool hue though. With the night mode turned on, you do get brighter shots with better details, although it does not do much in terms of fixing the color science. But what's a little annoying here is that the Phone 1 does not let me manually select night mode all the time. If nothing's algorithm detects that there is sufficient ambient light, the night mode toggle is simply nowhere to be found. Moving on, like the back cameras, I found that its selfie cameras are also rich in contrast. So chances are that you might end up with a bit gloomy selfies at times. But overall, I like how the photos retain good details and skin tone alongside a balanced subject and background separation. The Nothing Phone 1 has impressed me with its video recording abilities too, at least from its rear camera. There is no 4K 60fps recording option here, but it shoots steady videos across all resolutions available. One thing I wish Nothing could have managed is similar color tuning on videos like the photos though, because you can clearly see that the videos have a bit higher saturation and contrast levels. Okay, so about the selfie videos, the Nothing Phone 1 can only shoot at 1080p 30fps. So yes, there is no 4K recording option in the selfie camera, just like any other mid-range phone in 2022. Um, the actual quality of this camera is actually not that bad. It's uh, pretty good, but the phone is not able to maintain background exposure very well. So in regards to this, I wish Nothing had uh, used a newer sensor instead of the old IMX471. Finally, talking about the battery life, I found it to be good, but it's not great. On days with heavy gaming and lots of mobile data and GPS usage, it would give up on me before I got home by evening. Under light usage though, I did manage to get around 7 hours of screen on time from this thing. Unfortunately, nothing does not provide a compatible charger inside the box, and you will have to buy its 45 watt power adapter separately, which costs like 2500 Indian rupees. Or, according to nothing, if you have a Quick Charge 4 compatible charger, that works too. But interestingly enough, I actually got faster charging speed when using a Quick Charge 3 compatible adapter instead of what the company recommends. By the way, the Phone 1 also supports 15 watt wireless and 5 watt reverse wireless charging, but since I am not a big fan of slow wireless charging, I did not use this feature on the Phone 1 that much, apart from that one time that I used it for testing. Okay, so let's wrap things up now. So it's obvious by now that the Nothing Phone 1 easily stands out against other mid-range phones in 2022. That uh, semi-transparent design mixed with all those LED lights sure do offer a breath of fresh air to anyone who's looking for a phone with a unique character above everything else. And even if you don't care about any of those uh, funky design elements, this is still a solid all-rounder smartphone that deserves your attention. But for the price, the Phone 1 is not perfect by any means. There are quite a few software bugs here and there, but more importantly, it does not have the best performance for rupee value and you can easily find tons of mid-range devices with much better performance. But guess what? None of them can duplicate this guy's fresh smartphone experience and this is why the Nothing Phone 1 is selling crazy well in every part of the world. However, one thing I got to mention in this video is if you roll back a few months, Nothing conducted the Truth event where its co-founder Carl Pei said that they were going to revolutionize the smartphone industry. They said there is no ecosystem in the Android world and that they were going to create an ecosystem similar to Apple. But honestly, I haven't seen any of those things till now. 
yes the phone one has created a little excitement thanks to its newer design but people will eventually get bored with it too so it's going to be interesting to see what nothing has in store in the future i really hope that they have something really exciting for us so there you have it guys, our full review of the Nothing Phone 1 after one month of use. I know that this was a very lengthy, elaborate video, but I hope you guys liked it. And um, if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.